Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Mindy and I've lost 110 pounds on Wugobi and Manjaro. Today I want to talk about the five things you need to keep in mind before starting a GLP-1, like Manjaro, Wugobi, Ozempic, Saxenda, Trulicity, all those million drugs that are classified in the GLP-1 category. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments or just pop down there to say hi. If you find my content informative or entertaining, please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member. You can do that on my Buy Me A Coffee page, which I'll write on the screen here, and I'll have a link down in the description and in the comment section. My Buy Me A Coffee members enjoy free and discounted products. They also have a members only section of my Discord channel, which is free to all of my subscribers. Feel free to check out the link in the description for the Discord channel. We're building a lovely little community over there of people that are just supportive and positive, and it's just a great place to ask questions and get tips about things that have helped other people that are on these GLP-1 drugs. Thank you so much to my new members. I just wanted to call you out and let you know how much I appreciate you guys. My goal of returning to full-time content creation could not be realized without you guys. I still have quite a ways to go, but I'm so grateful for you guys stepping in and helping to support me and the content that I create on this channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel but don't want to become a member, I do have some products that you can purchase on my Bye Bye A Coffee page, some recipe cards, a calorie cycling meal planner that I just recently put up on there. I also have coaching calls and lots of other things that you can take advantage of, so feel free to take a look. Without any further ado, let's get into the five things you need to consider before starting a GLP-1. So the very first thing is one of those TMI subjects. And there's a reason that it's the most talked about topic in support groups, and that's constipation. People have been hospitalized for impaction on these drugs because they weren't proactive about it. So it is no joke. I mean, I know it's a gross topic and it's not something that people want to talk about, but it is, it's definitely not a joke. I don't wait to see if it affects you. I haven't met anyone yet that hasn't dealt with it in some form or fashion. So on these drugs, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You don't want to wait until you haven't been to the bathroom for a week before you try and do something about it. The formula that I found that works for me is I take a probiotic prebiotic combo every single day and I also take four high absorption magnesium glyconate every single evening. It helps me sleep, but it also helps relax everything in my system so that I can keep regular. I also drink over 90 ounces of water a day. Now, there are some days where I don't reach that goal, but for the majority of the time, I'm drinking at least 90 gallons of water, 90 gallons, not that much, 90 ounces of water a day or more if I can. And I get three short 10 minute walks in, which does help with regularity as well. Activity and moving your body, all of that helps with the regularity. Get plenty of high fiber foods if you can and good carbohydrates. Obviously that's all dictated by your medical restrictions and what your doctor and nutrition team has you on but carbohydrates are not the devil, you guys. In fact, many people lose weight better eating them. I'm one of them. The second thing to keep in mind before starting a GLP-1 is the insurance and coupon drama. GLP-1s were originally established as a diabetes treatment. So that means that type two diabetics and pre-diabetics are gonna have a much easier time than most when it comes to insurance. But even then, many insurances require step therapy as there are a lot of treatments that are far cheaper than these drugs. If you don't know what step therapy is, just a brief understanding is they want you to try several other drugs, usually three, before they will cover these types of drugs to make sure that there isn't another treatment out there that's less expensive that won't work for you. Even though GLP-1s are extremely efficient at helping with weight loss, weight loss is still considered a behavioral issue instead of a medical one in most circles. So that means that most insurances don't cover weight loss medications at all. So unless you have type 2 diabetes or another illness of some kind like PCOS, many of your insurances aren't going to cover these if you're just taking them to lose weight. That's slowly starting to change, but it's definitely going to take time. The other thing to keep in mind with insurance is that just because a drug gets added to your formulary doesn't mean that it's gonna stay there. I've heard from many of my subscribers and in support groups about coverage changing, even after getting a prior authorization approved. And that's something else to know. If your insurance covers drugs with a prior authorization, just keep in mind that they are an absolute nightmare and they take time. I have heard that online and weight loss clinics are much more accomplished at getting prior authorizations approved than regular doctor's offices, so they might be worth a shot if that's something that you're struggling with. The thing that has been on everybody's mind these days is coupons. <laughs> if you've been around for any length of time or have ever followed anything on Manjaro content, you will know that there has been a ton of coupon drama, a million different changes, a million different iterations, and it is so frustrating. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, when a new drug comes to market, there's almost always what's called a loss leader coupon. So a loss leader is used in many different industries, not just the drug industry, but it's basically something that's designed to get everybody talking about something. They're taking a loss on the cost of the drugs just so that they can get a lot of people interested in taking it so that they can get an established baseline for the drug being an effective remedy for weight loss, diabetes, whatever it is that they're trying to market it for. And then eventually enough people have started the drug to establish its effectiveness and the coupon changes or it goes away completely. Some coupons more than others. I'm looking at you, Eli Lilly. <laughs> Ultimately, they help. If your insurance isn't covering the majority of the cost, they're still going to be extremely costly. Because of that, once the coupons expire, a lot of people, like me, choose to switch to a compound. I will be switching to a semaglutide compound next week when my Manjaro runs out. If you're not familiar with what compounds or compounding is, I will link my compound Q&A video here. I answer a lot of questions about how I found my compounding pharmacy, and I will tell you that not all compounds are created equal. Always try to use a local compounding pharmacy first and beware of peptide distributors who sell without requiring a prescription. They're not tested or intended for human use. so. Just be aware of what you're paying for. The next thing you need to keep in mind before starting a GLP-1 is that you still need to watch what you eat. These drugs are miracles in many ways, but they are not miraculous. <laughs> Ultimately, the only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. If your weight gain was not medical, meaning poor eating habits and a sedentary lifestyle made you gain weight, like me, you are still going to have to change your diet and increase activity to get the weight off. I know you don't want to hear that. A lot of people think that they can just take these drugs and the weight's going to fall off. And then they start taking the drugs and their weight doesn't change and they express all their frustration and irritation and anger about the fact that the, drugs, that the drugs aren't working but then when you ask them what they're doing to help the process along the answer is nothing so just be aware that you're still going to have to do what you need to do in order to put yourself into a caloric deficit so that you can lose the weight in that same vein please 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 do not take the advice of others or use these drugs for what is essentially pharmaceutically induced anorexia. I have seen people talk about losing crazy amounts of weight on these drugs. And when asked about how much they're eating, it's often not more than six to 800 calories a day. Eating six to 800 calories a day is not healthy and it's extremely detrimental to your long-term metabolic health. You may lose a lot of weight in the beginning, but eventually that's gonna taper off. And then the only way to lose more is to eat less. If you have the ability to work with a dietitian, not a nutritionist, I highly recommend that. And if you're interested in the differences between a dietitian and a nutritionist, please let me know in the comments and I'll work on a video for that. The fourth thing to keep in mind before starting a GLP-1 is the return of food noise. One of the biggest benefits of these drugs is the quieting of food noise. If you've never heard of that term before, food noise is when you sit and think about food all the time, even when you know you're not hungry. If you're somebody who has dealt with constant weight gain and struggled with dieting and things like that, it's something that you're probably quite familiar with. And for me, that was one of the biggest revelations when I started Wegovy in October of 2021 was that I wasn't sitting and thinking about food 24 seven. And I absolutely loved that side effect while it lasted. The reason I say while it lasted is because, well, after about a year, maybe less, that side effect started to fade. It is not a forever fix. I'm on almost the maximum dose of Manjaro and I have had to learn how to combat the food noise on my own because I still get it. The way I do that is by meal planning every week. I track my calories. I drink plenty of water when I'm starting to hear that food noise and I think I'm probably not ready for a meal. I take a pause and think about it. So if I'm starting to think about food and I'm thinking about grabbing something to eat, even though I know I probably shouldn't eat or it's not something that I've planned to eat, then I'll take a five to 10 minute time out and if I still want to eat something after the end of that time then I'll think about it. The last thing I want you to consider before starting a GLP-1 is, is that this is not a quick fix. If you go about weight loss the right way it is never a quick process. Sure you can practically starve yourself and drop close to a pound a day for a while but eventually your metabolism is going to adapt itself so that it can not starve. <laughs> Your metabolism knows how to slow down your body processes so that it uses fewer and fewer calories. And that means that when you want to return to eating a normal amount of calories a day, guess what? You're gonna gain all that weight back. For someone like me that had close to 200 pounds to lose, 
my metabolism will never allow that to go on long term. The fact that I'm still losing weight over a year and a half later is proof that I'm doing something right. I'm going about it the right way. And that means trying to stay between a half a pound to two pounds of weight loss per week on average. At this point, I've lost 110 pounds, which is a lot of weight. But I've been on this journey since October of 2021, and I will likely still be losing weight for at least another year, maybe longer. Taking my time on this journey has ensured that my metabolism will be in a much healthier place at the end of all of this, which means that I'll have less likelihood of regaining it all back once I'm done. Speaking of my 110 pounds lost, I also wanted to share my weigh-in with you guys this week. And it's another one of those weeks where I'm just reminded of the fact that the scale is a liar. I have used that phrase before and it is true. I had a 2.4 pound gain at the end of week 10, doing absolutely everything right. Monday and Tuesday of this week, I ate out, I ate higher calories, and I still lost 1.4 pounds the next day on both days. The lowest calorie intake of the week that I had, my weight stayed the same this week. So just keep in mind, you guys, the scale is not a direct reflection of the effort that you put in. Don't change your habits and your eating pattern based on the feedback that the scale gives you. Just keep staying consistent and eventually it's going to go. That being said, I lost 5.4 pounds from last Friday, which means that I'm back down to my lowest weight from before my birthday. <laughs> and I have lost a total since the start of this cut. 21.8 pounds in 11 weeks, which is an average of 1.98 pounds per week, and I am totally happy with that. I have lost, of course, since starting October of 2021, 110.6 pounds. I did want to share my meal plan with you for this week. I'm trying a new macro-friendly food recipe for ham and cheese breakfast enchiladas. I'm going to be just doing leftovers for lunches, and then I'm going to be making some salmon rice bowls with a healthy, like a lightened up version of a yum yum sauce and a spicy cucumber salad. And then I'm also making a repeat of the recipe that I've already tried from Macro Friendly Food, which is the creamy chicken gnocchi. It's just, I'm gonna be using chicken breast instead of chicken thighs this time because I didn't love it with the chicken thighs last time. So I'm hoping that with the chicken breast, I'm gonna like it even better. I mean, I love the flavors, but the texture of the chicken thighs was weird in that application. So I'm gonna try it with the chicken breast this time instead, and I'm really excited about it. At the end of the day, am I saying that you shouldn't start a GLP-1? Absolutely not. <laughs> I am saying that you need to have proper expectations. Weight loss in general is stressful and frustrating, and a lot of people seem to think that drugs like this are going to make the whole process easy. I always prefer to go into things with my eyes wide open, and honestly, I wish someone had been around to tell me what to watch out for and what to expect through this process. While I do hope that I'll be able to take advantage of a GLP-1 for the rest of my weight loss journey to make that process easier on myself, it isn't the end of the world if I can't. I've taken the time on them to establish some healthy habits to see me through the rest of my journey, and I don't feel like it's gonna be the end of the world if I have to stop taking the GLP ones at this point. The thing that I'm most thankful for is that these GLP ones have allowed me to learn a new way of life so that I can hopefully maintain this new lifestyle once I reach my goal. Weight gain is a reality at the end of a weight loss journey for about 80% of people who lose significant amounts of weight regardless of the method that they use to do that. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I can maintain without having to stay on these drugs long term. I think that's it for this video, you guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, say hi to me down in the comments, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. We're on a journey, looking back on the things that we've taken for granted, but feels like we're learning to be better.